When I started astrophotography, I wanted to know how easy it was to take a photo of Andromeda Galaxy like this. I quickly learned that it was harder than I thought, as you need something called a star tracker. I wanted to know if you could take a photo with just a DSLR, a telephoto lens, and a tripod. You can, and it's actually pretty easy. You're not going to be able to take a photo like this, but you can take a photo like this, and it still looks pretty cool. I'm going to go out shooting tonight and explain to you some tips and tricks I've learned along the way while trying to shoot Andromeda, what works, what doesn't, and just some other helpful tips. So if you do enjoy, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Let's go and photograph a galaxy. Side now it's incredibly clear tonight I'm going to turn my head torch off I don't need that on Andromeda is over here in the northeast the setup tripod need the tripod the tripod is the biggest part of this DSLR I'm using a 5D mark IV, and the lens is a 70 to 200 f 2.8 the first thing we need to do is find out where Andromeda is in the sky I'm using a free star sky night app it's called night sky and I'm going to point up have a look around there's the moon Andromeda the spiral galaxy there it is that's the first thing we want to do. We now know where it is in the night sky. That is the first step, is working out where Andromeda is in the night sky. If you download a free app, there's so many out there on the App Store or the Google Play Store, whatever your phone is, whatever your app store is. Download the app, find out where Andromeda is. That is the very first thing you need to do. Okay, let's have a look at equipment. You wouldn't be able to take a photo of Andromeda using a camera like a, a G7X, a point and shoot camera. You need a DSLR. Lens wise, I'm using a telephoto. This is a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. A very, very big piece of equipment that I would highly recommend is this. It's a remote shutter cable. This means you don't have to touch the camera. You can walk away. You can walk as far away as you want and then just press it and it takes a photo. There is something you need to take into account when you're shooting. There's something called the 500 rule, where you take 500 and divide it by your focal length. So for me, I'm gonna be shooting at 200 millimeters. So you need to take 500 and divide it by 200. That gives me a maximum shutter time of 2.5 seconds. Now that's crucial because that is the maximum time I can shoot for without getting star trails, because you don't want star trails in a shot where you wanna get nice, sharp stars. So once we've got all the equipment, we've got the tripod, the telephoto lens, the DSLR, I'm gonna be showing you what it looks like when I'm shooting so you'll be able to see exactly the screen that I see from the back of the camera. So I know that Andromeda is roughly there I would say. So once the camera moves, we take a test shot. So even in this image, okay, I know it might not look like much, but we can actually see Andromeda. It's at the top middle of the screen it looks like. So I'm going to bring it up. We found Andromeda. Wasn't too hard, but as you can see, the camera settings I'm using, we're shooting at two and a half seconds at 10,000 ISO. Incredibly high ISO, it's gonna be ridiculously noisy. But as I said, you've got to take into account the 500 rule. 500 divided by your focal length. So in this case, 500 divided by 200, which gives me 2.5 seconds before you start seeing star trails. It may not look like much on the actual screen now, but down the camera, I've got uh, Andromeda dialed in incredibly far. Um, now I need to readjust the focus here. So I'm just going to make sure that these stars on the edge are pinpoint. I reckon that's pretty decent. It might not look like much to you guys here, but if I was to zoom out, take a photo at two and a half seconds, let's see how it looks. There we go, exactly. This is exactly what we can see here, Andromeda Galaxy. Now if I zoom right into this, obviously we're going to have a lot of noise. We're shooting at 10,000 ISO, which is ridiculously high but we can see a galaxy. We've just taken a photo of Andromeda Galaxy using just a telephoto lens and a camera. That's it, no star tracker. But we're not gonna stop there, obviously we wanna do better than that. It's now about trying to get the right focus. Now this can be quite tedious, so it might take you a few tries. Uh, be patient with it. Now of course the big thing is we're shooting at 10,000 ISO, which for uh, crop sensors is going to be ridiculously noisy. And even for a full frame like the 5D, uh, you're gonna get a lot of noise. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop the shutter down to two seconds, reduce the ISO to 6400, let's see how that looks. Alright guys, I think I found the, uh, the perfect settings for these conditions tonight. I'm shooting at 1.6 shutter, 6400 ISO, f2.8. 
Now, as I say, at the start of the video I said you're not going to take a photo looking like this. You're never going to achieve that with the equipment we've got now. But we can still take a photo of Andromeda, it's still something to tick off the bucket list. And then later on, you know, maybe in a few years time, a few months time, a few weeks time, you get hold of a star tracker, then you can start to look at taking photos like that. But for now, we can't complain, we've just taken a photo of another galaxy, so I still think it's pretty cool. Let's jump over into the editing now. I'm really happy with what we've shot now, but we can add a few little things in editing um, to make it look even better. See you in a minute. So now we've taken all the photos, I'm going to import them into Lightroom and show you what I'll do when I was to edit a photo like this. So during the shoot I took roughly 10 to 15 different shots at all at different settings. The shot I finally did go for was this one at ISO 6400, f2.8, 1.6 seconds at 200 millimeters. This is the picture I'm going to be using. So what I always do when I take photos into Lightroom is to adjust the crop straight away, so either level it out if there's a horizon or uh, crop it down for Instagram. So for this I take the photo, take it to a 4x5 because that's the Instagram ratio. Lighting wise I'm not doing too much, I'll maybe just slightly increase the exposure, you'll actually see later on that I do decrease it. In terms of shadows not doing too much to that, maybe dimming them a little bit. With the highlights maybe just bringing them slightly up, you'll see I do actually decrease the uh, exposure a bit later on because I think the photo is a bit too bright. Because I shot this photo in raw format it means there's so much information in the photo so I can adjust the light to however I want it. This was shot at an auto white balance so I do want to make the photo a little bit warmer to give that sort of orangey glow to the stars. Texture wise I'm going to decrease that a little bit we don't want too much texture in there as we've already got quite a, a noisy photo for clarity I don't need to increase it that much so I might drop it down to maybe minus 15 minus 10 I'm gonna increase the dehaze a little bit because that sort of darkens the blacks now coming down to the detailed section when it comes to reducing the noise I'm going to get the slider and probably move it to about a quarter of the way so maybe 25 30 this reduces the noise enough where you don't see a really washed out image but there's still detail in the shots obviously we shot at quite a high ISO 6100 so there's going to be a lot of noise the next thing I'm going to do is go to the radial gradient tab and basically draw a weird looking oblong shape around Andromeda. And all I'm going to do is slightly increase the exposure. This just makes the photo pop a bit more and it draws the audience's attention to Andromeda. Instead of increasing the exposure on the whole image, drawing this radial gradient just increases the exposure on certain areas. It's not too much, it's just a subtle change but it just makes it look even better. Once I'd finished the edit on this, I did want to um, drop the exposure down a little bit as I found it was just a little bit too bright. Uh, I played with the vignette a little bit as well, just to have those darker corners. And that was pretty much it in terms of the edit. Nothing major, nothing too serious on the edit. Reduce some of the noise, play with the colour, and that is pretty much it. Now I've exported the image, I'll show you the final piece. For the first try shooting Andromeda, I'm really happy with this. So if you did enjoy, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. You guys seem to be enjoying the video, so thank you for all the kind words. I'm really looking forward to showing you some of the content that I've been shooting over the past few weeks. If you are going out to try and shoot Andromeda, good luck. I pray that you have clear skies. Tweet me your results, let me know how you get on, send me a DM, however you want to do it. Please let me know how you get on. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again, guys, in another video. Goodbye.